Hello and welcome to this first tutorial on uh, Microwave Office, a software produced by AWR. AWR and Microwave Office can be used uh, for many applications. Uh, what we will be looking at in this series of tutorials is how to simulate analog circuits and uh, radio frequency and microwave circuits. First of all, let's have a look at the basic user interface. Uh, the first thing to notice is that there are three main tabs in the main software window and those are the project tab, the elements tab and the layout tab. Uh, let's start with the project tab first. Uh, you can see that it comprises of a, a number of elements. The first item is design notes. Uh, this section uh, allows you to uh, put some notes uh, in the project that uh, you're building and this may be useful to remind yourself of uh, specific uh, decisions that you made uh, whilst building the project and also uh, may help other designers or um, colleagues that want to use your project understand how you've set it up. The next item is project options. This is uh, very important and it allows you to set the frequency range over which the circuit will be simulated and also to uh, determine which uh, units would be used as default units for the whole project. Now if we double click on, uh, on this item, uh, this window opens up and um, we can see that uh, there is a uh, list of frequencies in the current range box uh, over which the uh, project will be simulated. In this case, we're looking at an amplifier, 7 GHz amplifier, so it's simulating around that frequency. If we want to uh, change the frequency range over which the simulation will be carried out, we need to insert our start frequency, our stop frequency, uh, our step, and then what's very important is to select replace and then click on apply. If you don't click on apply, the range will not be replaced and hence uh, you will still be simulating over the old range. So let's click apply and you can see the frequency range is now there. You can also select uh, specific frequencies or multiple frequencies and then delete them uh, out of your range if, if you so wish. You can also do a one point simulation by clicking on single point and clicking on apply. In this case, you've got just one gigahertz as your single frequency point. Uh, under the schematic and diagrams tab, um, you can change some little cosmetic things like uh, whether you want to show or hide units or labels. Um, you usually don't need to change anything in here, at least I, I never do. Uh, in global units, this is quite an important one. You can set uh, the uh, unit measures that you want to use as default for your various elements and um, in this case the frequency is gigahertz but you may for example want to select megahertz um, the resistance is in ohms so it could be kilo ohms that you're interested in um, and again uh, you've got other things like the capacitance which is in picofarads you, you may want to choose a different units normally i would always pick the length to be in metric units so i would just need to tick this box and then select the length that i'm interested in usually uh, millimeters or micrometers would work and then click on OK. And next we've got global definitions. In global definition um, you can actually insert global variables which will then be used throughout your schematic and throughout your project. And uh, this can be very useful for, um, for example, uh, values that are going to be used uh, in, in several places such as the width of transmission lines or the value of resistances. The other thing that you can have is data files. You can import data files um, uh, which contain, uh, for example, S parameters for a transistor or any other uh, sub-circuit that you'd like to um, introduce in your project. In this case, uh, these are the S parameters for a uh, transistor uh, which is used for 7 GHz design. Next, we've got system diagrams. Um, system diagrams allows you to uh, build uh, specific diagrams which contain uh, the building blocks of your system and they allow you to do an overall system simulation rather than a circuit simulation. We won't be looking at those at this very moment but it's a useful uh, tool to have. Um, you can for example build the, uh, the whole transceiver or just the receiver part of the transceiver put a specific waveform in the input and see what you get in the output and you can have a number of modulation formats to choose from. 
circuit schematics is one of the ones that we will be using uh, a lot of the time and this allows you to set up um, your schematics. There is, for instance, the schematic for the input matching network of the uh, transistor. The other item that we may look at at some point is the electromagnetic structures. And this allows you to uh, set up a simulation uh, which will mainly deal with uh, reasonably planar geometries and will be a 2.5 engine behind it. It can be very useful to uh, simulate your circuit, not just from a uh, circuit point of view, but also from an electromagnetic uh, uh, point of view. Output equations uh, can be uh, quite quite a, quite useful in that you can set up uh, specific um, quantities, which are a combination of um, which are a combination of values that come directly from the simulation. For instance, you may have uh, the voltages of different nodes and you may want to build um, a, um, an output uh, variable that um, is a linear combination of those voltages. That's not directly calculated in the simulator, but you can create an output equation where you create um, your own uh, quantity, your own variable based on the um, quantities available uh, from uh, the simulation itself and you can for example calculate the derivative or the integral or, or the Fourier transform of, um, of a time waveform. Uh, under graphs uh, you can set up a graphical representation of your results um, you can set up different types of graphs, uh, rectangular graphs for instance, uh, you can have logarithmic graphs like board plots or, or simply you know, graphs with a, log uh, with a logarithmic uh, frequency scale. You can also set up Smith charts um, and, and all sorts of, of plots. Um, in fact, if I right click on there and new graph, you can see all the, type, uh, all the different types that you can actually do. And we can take a look at some of these. Uh, this is, for example, is the uh, S21 for the amplifier. Um, and uh, well, we can see uh, the return loss on the chart for the transistor. Uh, optimizer. The optimizer uh, goals um, are the uh, specific goals that you set up um, for the optimizer to achieve. And uh, we will be looking at optimization uh, in the future. Um, we won't be looking at it in the very first few tutorials. Uh, output files, you can actually output uh, the results of your simulation into files of various formats. Uh, wizards, there are um, a number of wizards that you can use. Uh, probably the one that I actually use um, most, um, more than any other is the load pool wizard when you can actually uh, set up a um, large signal load uh, and a large signal uh, source impedance um, and and vary those uh, to find the optimal match for the power amp or power amplifier but we'll be looking at that later on in the tutorial uh, the user folders uh, can be actually quite interesting uh, to use in that it allows you to pick various bits from uh, uh, all the other sections and put them all together for instance you may just be interested in uh, in a couple of graphs in particular and in one schematic and you can just um, have those in your own uh, um, user folders and um, and isolate them from everything else and make them more accessible um, to you uh, when when you're doing your simulation this concludes the first tutorial on uh, microwave office uh, in the next tutorials we will be looking at um, how to set up um, relatively basic DC uh, and AC simulations and we'll then move on to um, the radio frequency circuits and uh, matching networks um, to then uh, move on to uh, amplifier design.